All right, welcome to Doer Duncy, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television and entertainment news with too many hosts with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is John Berwick, and a third one is Kyle Bridger. We will be talking about Big Brother today, so I am going to say that I am the the Jack to John's Jackson or Mickey, right? And then Dave, you can be old man Cliff. Oh, good Cliff old Hog Southern the third. Yeah. Cliff Hog the third. Okay, I'll take him. I'll take him. He's in the Big Brother house. Why not? He's a cowboy, and you didn't plan this, Kyle, or maybe you did. We will also talk about another cowboy tonight, our good friend Woody, old man Woody. He's been in movies for the last 20 years at this point, and we're talking about his latest one, Toy Story 4. Got a lot to do tonight, a lot of different things to talk about. We should jump into the show, so let's do it. But, John, I don't remember the segment. What is it? In and Out Points. In or out? In or out? In or out? In or out? Yes, yes, it is. It is in and out points. Now, the first one we're going to be talking about involves. I'm going to need a new drop for all the times we talk about petitions here on the podcast. Another, another uh, change.org oh, petition. Geez. You know, I just always people want to just change the world. We're recording this live during the debate. Maybe this will be one of the topics. Who knows? Probably not. But more than 20,000 Christians have signed the latest petition here, and it's asking for Netflix to cancel Good Omens, the Amazon fantasy comedy drama miniseries based on Neil Gaiman's and Terry Pratchett's book. Uh, So this Christian group says that this is another step to make Satanism appear normal, light, and acceptable. And it's mocking uh, God's wisdom. Now, the list of complaints against the series include how an angel and demon are depicted as good friends, God is voiced by a woman, and that the Antichrist is portrayed as a normal kid just on a mission to destroy the world, which he doesn't want to do. All right, I mean, Kyle. isn't that aren't, aren't isn't that basically every like you watch those ghost adventures show and it's like. It was a child dressed as a as a satanic symbol, and it's like, so um, if it's portraying it that way, then I mean, uh, isn't this something that you guys talk about in your Christian club or something like that? Isn't that something that when you go to the the old uh, church club Sundays, you're like, old Satan, watch out for him and his you kids. Know, he's a trickster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I- I, I think this would be good discussion for them to have. They can watch this and say how bad it is. Like it's it's something to talk about. What's really interesting, I think this is funny because this Christian group says they're making Satanism appear normal. And then about, I don't know, uh, a few months ago, we talked about the chilling adventures of Sabrina and how the Satanic Temple was saying you're making light of our Satanism. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> I all know. right, everyone can be happy here. It's like it's either too light, it's too dark. We need one that's just right, I guess. But why? But why are they were if like they want those people to to if those people are just gonna be you know Satanists or whatever, and the Christians believe this is so uninformed right now. This is such an uninformed opinion, but and the Christians, I mean, are like all about doing good or whatever. What like and so aren't Satanists going to hell? So why don't they, why do they care what the Satanists are doing? Cause they're going to hell. They're in hell. They're yeah in hell. So why, why? Yeah. I, I, I don't get they're it. They're worried I mean, about them spreading Satanism around normalizing the Satanism. But it's also funny cause this is based on a book and Oh, I didn't, I didn't see a petition for the book. Books. Okay. Oh, because, because it's on uh, TV now. Now we have to, discuss this here you know we have an issue with no it. one's reading books anymore john read it john you did you check out good omens or were you just turned off god is voiced by a woman can't do it 
I uh, only good Christian shows for me. Sorry. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. John, do you did you read the Bible? This is little known book called the Bible. I read it twice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. I like the I like one this, where um, when does the when does the Night King come in? When does when does that happen? That's the uh, Sixth Testament. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's the yeah. book they're still working on. Yeah, it's later. It. Yeah, no spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, Only the show's yeah, like out, it. not the not the final books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I liked how he said good Christian shows. Just last week we talked about Euphoria. Oh yeah. I'll just I'll just yeah. leave it at that. Um but the one thing I, this isn't done with this petition here. I don't know if you caught this, but neither did the group when they made their return to order petition. They were asking Netflix to cancel this series. This yeah. show is on Amazon. Amazon, yeah. When you said Amazon, I was like, "How does that make sense?" I thought well, it was one of those weird things where, like, Amazon Studio was, it was making it, but it was being distributed. I don't know. I so I was confused when you said that to begin with. So, uh, you know, yeah, they they, uh, they did update their uh, their anger at Amazon for for their uh, the petition here. They have that fixed on their their website. The thing I don't 100% know, but I'm pretty sure about this as well, they're asking for now Amazon to cancel the series. Pretty sure it's a miniseries. So I I guess they win. I guess they won. (laughs) See ya. The show's over. Yep. I was was thinking that once they found out it was Amazon, they'd be like, I want you to be cancel this show cancel everything but please keep my two-day shipping for prime <laughs> orders yeah they have to man that too much of a monopoly amazon has uh netflix and amazon did get in on the joke uh netflix tweeted back okay we promise not to make any more and then amazon replied hey netflix we'll cancel stranger things if you cancel good omens so oh, oh everyone God. everyone has to watch out here also, th- we're living in th- the age, man. Where <laughs> I sounded like <laughs> I sounded like the Big Lebowski. The man. We're living in this age where, like, corporate corporate entities are talking on Twitter, and it's like two dudes. In <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird thing. And then people report on that. Yeah. It's uh, it's such a weird thing, man. Yeah, like companies have personalities on Twitter. Like I you know, know, you know, uh, whatever. Wendy's is a little <laughs> bit of a sassy. Like, yeah, you know, they'll have a retort for this, and yeah, they all have. I don't know. They always have the answers, but uh, uh, Netflix had an answer for our next thing. And I don't know if I like the answer they give. Uh, it's a little update to the thing we talked about last week: prank encounters. Uh, last week we discussed this punk style prank show starring Gaten uh, Matarizzo. He's Dustin from Stranger Things. Uh, pretty much it's going to trick unsuspecting people who think they are starting their first day of work. Well, Netflix finally responded and clarified the premise of the show after numerous articles and complaints on Twitter and just everywhere on the internet. And here's their response. And I want to break this thing down because to me, doesn't really help clarify anything here. They said, quote, the pranks in prank encounters are spooky, supernatural, and over the top, and everyone had a great time. All participants came in with the expectation this was a one-day hourly gig, and everyone got paid for their time. I'm just confused by this here, right? John? John? So, like, uh, Yeah, I don't know. It seems like they got offered like a, a a freelance one get one day kind of thing, you know, where it's just like, yeah, come in, we need some help moving furniture in the movie theater, or some you know BS, and and they get pranked while they're doing stuff. I I don't know. I, I still don't like it, but I, I guess it kind of alleviates that, like, um, you know, haha, you didn't get a job that we were kind of worried about, you know. Yeah, yeah, I it do, does help that aspect, but then just the premise of the show, I feel like. Again, I do not advocate for this show. I don't want this show to because we went to length of how just cruel this show is. Mm-hmm. But okay, so they went in thinking it was a one day job, not like 
Okay, like, like a freelance thing. It was something? like a one day hourly gig. Is that really a job? I guess it's like you know, like a temp work where you just needed like one day of service. Yeah. But like, is that really know. a? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, is that really a job? Is does that qualify what you're talking about for the show? They're starting their part time jobs and it becomes a full time nightmare. Uh, yeah. It's this, gonna be over after lunch. Like, when yeah. I don't get this, this is this is dumb. Yeah, this uh, the premise is just dumb. The premise yeah. is just dumb. Also, it said spooky in cat. What what is that even? Spooky what are they doing? It natural and over the top. Oh. What are they doing? A, the Halloween night or party city? What what is going on? Where are they doing this? Dude, I would not be surprised. I've not seen a still from this show. But how much you want to bet that like they walk into the room and like they somehow like screwed all the furniture into the ceiling and it's the upside down. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, oh, how am I supposed to sit up there with that? You know, it's like some dummy in like in a chair, like pretending like to type, you don't really like see him or something. It's like, yeah, you got me. All right. Yeah. Is, can I go yeah. now? Did I put this, my four hours? Like this, this premise is just dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah, it just it just adds more questions to it. the spokesperson decline to answer additional questions, especially about how the jobs were marketed. So yeah, like, do these people yeah. think again? Think. Is this a long time job? Is, yeah, do they know it's a one day job. Like, well, yeah, you could easily say it's a one day job because the the show is only going to do it for a day. But did they go in thinking that there was going to be more than one day? If they did, then. It's right back to the original problem to begin with. So uh, this this idea blows. I don't know what they were thinking. It's just stupid. Yeah. yeah. I think we're all in agreement on that. Yeah, I just... At this point, we're definitely talking about it. Whenever this does drop, it's going to be on the show because <laughs> third time's a charm, maybe. But yeah, uh, I'm hoping they just, they just cancel this thing because I just don't think this is gonna work at all i just think it's just it's so messed up from the premise to everything about it yeah all right one last in and out point to talk about tonight and it involves something we talked about all the way back in episode 244 and that's avengers endgame it has now made over 2.7 billion dollars worldwide since april 26 and it's it's trying Maybe for that five to six billion that Nick Boyle was hoping for, <laughs> even though it's still in about a thousand theaters. Well, it's uh, coming back, baby. Yeah, you know, I'm getting there, Kyle. Give me oh. a second. <laughs> Come on, you're, I'm building up a little excitement. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is coming back. Uh, it's in a thousand theaters. It made nearly two million last weekend, but yeah, it's getting a re-release with new footage. Kyle, it sounds like you're excited. Are you gonna go? No, I'm not going to go. Why not? Uh, new footage. <laughs> uh, new foot? What from Anthony Mackie's dressing room? What? Like what is? Whoa! What? <laughs> that just got five hundred more million dollars. <laughs> Mackie stands going out there now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anthony Mackie's. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a strike or striking vipers. Okay. Avengers remix. All right. Um. No, no I. How much new footage could there be? And it, so they're essentially doing what? Like a director's cut and they're release, re-releasing it again? <laughs> We're going to get to exactly what it could be because there's no specifics, really. But, but it, I don't it, think it's going it to be that much more. It's already three hours long. I know. <laughs> it's like what if it was cut, there's probably a reason it was cut. Bingo. <laughs> There's a reason why it was cut. But they're but they're doing this though, Kyle, to beat another record. They've beaten nearly every box office record but one. And that is Avatar's total. Uh it beat the film domestically, but worldwide, they are thirty-eight million dollars short of Avatar's record of two point seven eight eight billion dollars. Avengers only ha only has two point seven five zero. The thing, 38 more million. That's all it needs. The thing is, is people are going to go see it when it gets re-released with this footage from, I don't know. I have a question. I, yeah. Why Why is this re-release counting towards the original, like, total? Why isn't it not 
its own separate movie. I mean, are they going to market it as the same exact movie? Is it going to have the same name? Is it going to have a different name? Like, it just seems like it's weird that, like, what's stopping Avatar from re-releasing and just getting another couple thousand, you know? like <laughs> Yeah. Well, I... What's confusing is, like, it's still in theaters. So technically, like, is it replacing the ones that are still in theaters? That's just this new one now? Like, there could be people that are going into this not knowing that it's the new one. Maybe they're finally getting around to the, the old one. I don't know. It's just... It's just really I, this whole thing is just stupid. It can't be a re-release if it's still being released. It's just it's still in theaters. It's not a re-release. But yeah. anyways, Kevin Feige uh, said, quote, it's not an extended cut, but there will be a version going into theaters with a bit of a marketing push with a few new things at the end of the movie. If you stay and watch the movie after the credits, there will be a deleted scene, a little tribute and a few surprises, which will be next weekend. That is what he said. But then I saw a lot of articles about this new footage, and then I and these tweets and headlines kind of explained it that there's gonna be three new things. It sounds like an opening message from the director or directors, a tease for next week's Spider-Man film. Yes, that's right, the Spider-Man film that's coming out Tuesday, July second, less than a week from now. They're gonna do, a tease that movie, and then. There will be an quote unfinished deleted scene. Dude, I hate Disney. That's what are they doing? What are they doing? Why is this a thing? I, I'm, Wait for I'm the not... DVD. If you want they, all that crap, they can't. They can't. They got to They got to see this near. They got to see this now. This unfinished deleted scene. I have a lot of issues with this one. Kevin Feige is making it sound like it's going to be an end credit scene. So it's going to be something that doesn't matter it, you know it's going to be a stupid 30 second little like mm. a character you know that was like on the screen for two seconds in avengers is back for the little end credits joke it's going to be so pointless that it's going to be like okay i'm hoping somebody just like tapes it in the theater and releases it online and it's like all right yeah you saw it but the thing that really irks me about this is the word unfinished unfinished which means it's not done there's no there could be no cgi there could be no, it's like you're really going to re-release this thing ask people to spend more money give you even more money for your new total and you don't even have enough money enough energy to fix the cgi to fix the audio to make it sound nice for the people paying their uh -huh. hard-earned money you could put 0.001% of avatar's end game total and spend it on this but no no you, you can't it's it's just unfinished here you go just take it maybe really uh, maybe it'll be something funny like that one video of the guys like swinging his arms around before the cgi it looks so dumb you know what i mean maybe something <laughs> like maybe worth it because of that. that that quite possibly could be it or i hope it's like a tom cruise mission impossible trailer type thing <laughs> <laughs> or, or no, the the, no, mummy. the, the mummy. mummy, the mummy, the mummy, <laughs> yeah, the mummy. Ooh. Ah, ooh. <laughs> it's just like random noises. Um, yeah, and but yeah, you brought it up earlier, Kyle. It was left on the cutting room floor, and that's for a reason. Reason. Yeah. It wasn't essential to the movie, <laughs> like. Or so, the director thought it yeah. wasn't essential. So what's the point? Yeah, but don't worry. You'll hear an opening message from the directors, probably like, "Thank you guys so much for making this movie." Blah, blah, blah. So important, you know. Blah, blah blah. It's like whatever. It's going to be a quick little 30-second thing before yeah. the movie. They're going to show the trailer to Spider-Man, which is also very interesting timing because Toy Story 4 just hit theaters a few days yeah. ago. Didn't have as huge as an opening as they would hope, even though it was still the largest Toy Story movie, like the third largest animated movie of all time. It's still, quote-unquote, according to many headlines, failed. You know, it has a slump. And now you're going to re-release another movie in between that two-week break of the Spider-Man movie that's already coming, it's like, guys, can you just relax? You got money. <laughs> like, yeah. Aladdin's doing well. Lion King's gonna clean up. Mm -hmm. Everything else at the box office is just faltering. Just, do you really need the thirty-eight million extra here? Do you really need it? 
I mean, I get they don't, but I guess if it's all it takes is a, a thirty second open, a thirty second to a minute opening of a director, you know, sitting in his office, and then not having to do any work to release this footage that's unfinished, um, and they make thirty eight million out of that. Um, I think that's a pretty good budget <laughs> for the, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, it's the, just, I mean, it's true from a business standpoint, it makes sense. The thing that makes me, I think, laugh the most here is John mentioned something about an Avatar re-release. Disney now owns Avatar. Oh, my God. If you <laughs> right? tell me right now. Right? It, they, they, they bought Fox. They now own Avatar. And the first of possibly four sequels is currently scheduled for December 2021. There's no way that before 2021... They're not going to re-release Avatar, right? They have to re-release. The 2009 film, they'll re-release that into theaters, right? They uh, have to. Maybe. I feel like to build hype for the new one that's taken forever forever to come out, you would re-release the other one to get people you know, excited again. Uh, to get, you, know, you have four more sequels after this. You know, Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5... So they'll re-release re that. And then when the next phase of the Marvel franchise comes out in two years, they'll remind everyone about Endgame and re-release that. <laughs> Avatar 3 comes out, they'll re-release that. It just is going to go back and forth, back and forth. These two the movies cycle. are just going to be, yeah. At some point, when we're it's 2050, they would have made 5 to $6 billion each, because why not? Dude... I don't even know. It's the world we're living in. This crazy. Yeah. I I just. It's all a business thing. It, people will still go out and watch it. I'm not going to, but I guess in the long run it's worth it for them. But it's kind of just draining for the consumer, at least to me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We'll definitely talk about, you know, back in, in September when the box office finally is done. This summer has been really bad for a lot of other studios. And I think many are finally going to get the hint that you got to do something special here to get people into those seats. You can't just charge, you know, X amount of money and expect them to keep coming in unless you're going to re release a, a 30 second <laughs> unfinished scene to your blockbuster. Then then they'll fork over some hard earned money again. But mm -hmm. all right. Uh, that's enough for my rant on that. We talked briefly about Toy Story 4 there. Let's go into it a little bit more. In order to do that, we do have to go back. So, Kyle. Oh, boy. Can you send us back? back in time. We're back, I'm baby. Back, baby. Gotta get back in time. Oh, my you, uh, God. You jumped John's the gun. Face is yeah. like a disappointed father. You jumped oh it. You are, you are well ahead. The oh, best man. part about the live chat nowadays is just seeing the responses. <laughs> as soon as you do it, nah, not a good one. Swing and a miss. It's oh, just, man. I love it. Keep it going, I guys. Just, just it. rip into Kyle. Just rip into him, all right? The great all thing right. is I can't even see, so it's just like, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I oh. could just tell by John's reaction that it was just like a disappointed mm. dad and it was not not good <laughs> all right oh it's okay kyle you're you're trying your best oh, <laughs> oh jesus e for that's effort. even worse yeah all also right. i just noticed wait what, what are we talking about first here toy story 4 uh, did you already say that <laughs> Yeah, we did. Yeah, Are you paying attention tonight? It. Maybe I'm maybe I'm on drugs. That's why this this damn thing is off the rails. But Wait. I am just noticing Woody in the background oh. here. Oh, <laughs> the, the doll <laughs> Woody. The, 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 the toy Woody. Not another kind of Woody. The yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I did not go no there. No one's going there, there, but that looks like a counterfeit Woody, dude. <laughs> right. That face did not look it's Real. a bootleg Woody. Hey, okay, let's get back on track here with the show, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, here we go. Toy Story 4, it opened June 21st, had an opening weekend of 120 domestic. Boo! It was, 
but has made $279 million worldwide. Let's see here. When a new toy call, called Forky joins Woody and the gang, a road trip alongside old and new friends reveal how big the world can be for a toy. Now, let's see here. We've been waiting for a while for this one, and by a while I mean years. We discussed the announcement for this. Actually, none of you guys did. It was me and Mike back in episode 81. Wait, it's, it's been that long? Episode oh, 81, yeah. which we recorded in 2014. John, you have a clip of what we were expecting when we heard the announcement, if we were excited for Toy Story 4. Play that clip. Yes, yes, it is. It is in and out points. This first one gave me a heart attack earlier this week, and I'm just recovering from it because I am not happy, but we'll talk about it. Here it is. The uh, trilogy, the perfect trilogy of the Toy Story franchise is going to be becoming a fourth quill. I don't even know what the, the four. A saga. The, I think uh, after three, it's just a saga. Uh-oh, Mike. Are, are, are you looking forward to this? I am not even a little bit looking forward to this. I think the third one was perfect. And, you know, the more times you go back to the well, it's just going to come up dry at some point. Like, it's it's not going to last forever. They should quit while they're ahead. Yeah, I don't know how many more snakes Woody can find in his boot here. Um, I am a huge Toy Story fan. And as you said, you know, three was perfect. It was a perfect ending. So I don't understand why Pixar, who is once this innovative and creative company is going again to the sequel well to make another movie on something that i thought was done yes they they know what they're doing on the business side of things i'm just hoping the creativity uh, is still going to be there i really hope so i i you know I, I guess i have to believe it you know like, like innocent until proven guilty like i'm gonna consider it great until proven yeah. not great <laughs> Yeah, who who knows? Uh, right now, June sixteenth, twenty seventeen. We got a little bit of time for hopefully them to to back out and <laughs> change their mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. They mentioned uh, June sixteenth, uh, twenty seventeen. Well, it's June twenty sixth, yeah, twenty nineteen. Too, they they took a while there, yeah. Because again, we recorded that five years ago, back when I was in Los Angeles of all places. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. At the time, we were not happy. We were not excited. And John and I both saw this. I will say, looking at the Rotten Tomatoes scores for this film, universally beloved. 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. You know, they proved us wrong. Of course, you know, I, the, four movies that have all have 98% or higher. It's the, you, when you think about it, it's probably the highest rated franchise ever like it, mm. it, the batting average is just out of the park i will say i'm mostly on the positive side i got a few things in there that i want to discuss that like there's no reason for this movie to exist <laughs> for being 100 percent honest there's no sure. reason for it to exist sure there's points it felt like almost like a spin-off or like a tv short that they'll do for like abc but it did tie a nice bow to things it was a nice coda to the like andy trilogy here i just don't think it was necessary don't get me wrong had a great time in it big toy story fan fun movie great for the kids it's, it's gonna it's gonna do great at the box office it's gonna do great with critics i have some issues but first i want to hear from john's side of things john what did you think of toy story 4 yeah uh i mean the question is, did they need to do it? And I think the answer is no, they didn't need to. But like you said, it's not it's not as bad as as you might think. Um, I thought it was well written, but it definitely kind of stands out from the other three. Um, and and I think the biggest thing that stands out for me is, in the other three, they're all kind of avoiding humans. You know what I mean? Except for you know uh, uh, the first one when they had the. Uh, the encounter with the um, neighbor, but this one, it almost seems like the toys are much more willing, willing to like kind of mess with the humans. You know what I mean? They're, they're zipping around in cars and in plain sight of the humans. Uh, they're messing with, uh, you know, uh, um, someone while they're trying to drive a, a car and like, it just seems a little bit 
like a sounds different like you're direction. describing like child's play. Did you go yeah, to the right, right? <laughs> toy <laughs> movie this weekend? It's it's a little bit different, and that that kind of stood out to me as being strange. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's it's a Toy Story movie. You're 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 getting what you pay for. You know what I mean? It, it didn't it didn't crash and burn. It didn't bomb. Um, was it the best out of the four? No, probably not. But eh. yeah, I'm, I will say we're we're starting off negative, which we got to do. It's a it's a review show here. It's it's still a great movie. I mean, it's it's. If you have a family, take your family to this. You will enjoy it. The kids will love it. It's very funny. It's it's beautiful. Like it's a good movie. I'm just you know I'm peeling some of the layers back a little bit here. To me, there was just a lot going on for Woody. I mean, this is a Woody movie. It's his movie. Most of the voice cast is like sidelined in this. There's no Jesse really. There's no Rex Ham. They're off to the side. Sure they. They they'll have some moments here and there. They're off in their own world though. It's didn't, it's Woody. Was that? I was gonna say, didn't the the voice actor for Mr. Potato Head die between the last one? Yeah, and he I did think die. They, it's, they it's been so long. Reconstructed his voice from clips they had and stuff, and and I mean he he is kind of almost known in the other ones for like these one liners that he pops in, and there was really only one or two small ones in this one, which was kind of sad. But yeah, I mean a lot has changed since. <laughs> Even the yeah. third one came out. Yeah, I will say I saw that article that like you know yeah uh, the voice actor did die. I think it's uh, Don Rickles if I believe, mm -hmm. and he they I remember seeing this article that they went through all the footage and all the recordings they had of one, two, three, the video games, the shorts, everything they had that he recorded, and they pieced it together for this movie. And I'm like I'm expecting something, and then I think he had like two lines in the entire yeah. movie, and I was like. Really? Was that article necessary? I mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I will think it's like almost like a little bit of like a meta commentary about the movie that these like voice cast line, this voice cast is sidelined. Like, because for the most part, these movies, like the toys, they're kind of like obsolete now. I mean, Jesse Rex Ham, they had nothing. Buzz was barely, barely in it, really. Mm -hmm. you, you know, he's one of like the, the main stars of these movies. Like the first yeah. one was Buzz. I mean, that was the. The yeah, big yeah. moment, Buzz and Woody. That was the team up here. Instead, we we got more characters with Woody. Obviously, uh, we have Forky hanging out with Woody. We have Bo. Bo Peep is back. Uh, there's also a storyline with Woody and Gabby. Gabby, a new character here. So we have these like three stories going around. And to me, it seems a little messy. Um, there's eight credited story by credits in this film, eight people <laughs> credited with a story by credit. And then two of them wrote the screenplay. So you got a lot of cooks in the kitchen and I just was like, okay, now Forky's over here. Now Buzz is stuck. Now run over here and save the sheep. Okay. Run over here and do that. It was like a lot for Woody. I feel like to do, I almost think like Buzz should maybe have like watched Forky and then, then Woody could have dealt with Forky and, or I mean, uh, with a uh, Bo and Gabby, Gabby, I sound like I'm talking like. Woody's hanging out with Forky, Buzz yeah, with yeah, Bo, Gabby Gabby. It's like <laughs> just saying nonsense at this point. But you know what I'm saying, John, where it's like, okay, yeah. maybe he should have focused on like two stories and had like the another storyline with Buzz and Forky or something. Yeah. It's just I agree. But um speaking of all these characters, I want to talk about the pros. One of the pros is the voice talent here. Obviously, you have Tom Hanks and you have the return of Annie Potts here as Bo Peep, but you have so many newcomers, big and small. Uh, Christina Hendricks was great as Gabby Gabby, and she's teamed up with these like ventriloquist like henchmen, which smartly I thought for the movie did not talk, because they're ven or they're like the ventriloquist mm -hmm. dolls. Mm -hmm. They can't talk. Like, so I thought that was a very smart choice from the production of not letting them talk, and it just adds to the creepiness factor. And then we have Keanu Reeves as Duke Kaboom, like an evil Knievel stunt driver. Uh, the ones that also stood out, especially to the Boyle and Rojas podcast, uh, they loved the comedy of the film, especially Key and Peele's voice acting. There was these two like attached stuffed animals, and yeah, there was points that I felt like I was watching a Key and Peele skit uh, with their chemistry. Um, you know, they had this big runner about attacking the old lady to get the key. What did you <laughs> think of uh, the the new characters here, John Duke Kaboom and uh, the ones that Key and Peele played? I don't know. I I thought. 
when I saw Duke Kaboom, I was going to be like, oh, gosh, you know, it's going to be a, a, a boisterous, like, you know, my way's right, blah, blah, blah. But I actually ended up kind of liking his his persona. I thought it was it was good. It was it was like it was there, but it wasn't insisting on things, which was nice. Um, I I liked the uh, the Key and Peele's, uh characters. My my one gripe with that is that um, in the movie, they appear to be sewn together. Right. And in yeah. like every piece of media I've seen, they are not sewn together. In in the vi- the image that's up on the screen right now, in um a couple of the the like uh, I was watching the the video for Lonesome Cowboy, the the music from the end, they're not mm-hmm. they're not sewn together in there. It's it was it's just weird that there's a difference between those. But other than that, yeah, I thought it was all right. How much you want to bet? Come this Christmas, they will be sold separately. <laughs> uh, that's that's for sure going to happen by Disney there. Um, but yeah, uh, they also mentioned uh, Nick Rojas specifically tweeted at us and said Tony Hale was perfect, uh, perfect cast as Forky. And the, I mean, I could go on and on with the list here. You also had Carl we- Carl Weathers as Combat Carl doing like a Arrested Development version of Carl Weathers again as Combat Carl. Even Patricia Arquette had a very, very tiny part as the mom to the, uh, I guess, the granddaughter of the antique owner. I'm like, who is this person? This voice is so familiar. And I had to look it up. I'm, Patricia Arquette? They got her to do this? Okay. Why not? Um, but, yeah, I mean, the voice cast was great. And I think it worked because all these all these characters was, like, you didn't focus on, like, this wasn't. Like, if it was all Forky, that could have got annoying. If it was all Duke Kaboom, yeah. that could have gotten annoying. But because you have all these different other characters, it spread out the wealth, and they didn't overstay their welcome. It let um, them have and, a little bit heavier personalities, it felt like. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's not, they're not there the whole time. You you kind of bounce between them, and, and, and they don't overshadow each other. And, you know, <laughs> they have some interactions between each other that, that are unique because they're all different. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to bring up was the animation here. Uh, to me, this was obviously the best work that Pixar has done. Super realistic animation. It, I saw it in Dolby Cinema, and it was so crisp. Like this, There were scenes outside that I thought they took a video of the outside, and they just put in Bo and Woody next to them. They have this one cat in the antique shop that many people, when they first released a picture of the cat, thought it was an actual picture of a real life cat uh, and then you compare that to Sid's dog from the first <laughs> one of just this like blocky like you know like robotic dog and you go from that to this here um, yeah what did you think of the animation John it was it was top notch I, I I agree we're starting to get to the point where where reality is almost blurred um, I think another good example of this was Love, Death, and Robots from Netflix. There were certain things on there where I thought it was a real scene, a real desert somewhere, and then it turns out it's an animated thing. And this this hit that same thing where if if you showed me a still or you showed me a clip with no context, I would not be able to tell the difference without really scrutinizing it. And I probably wouldn't question it unless you asked, is this real or CGI? And then I would be like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're, they're getting scary good. Yeah, and then just a few weeks from now, we will have uh, the Lion King, and <laughs> that really blends the line of what is live action and what is CGI yeah. here. Uh, when you classify that movie, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, overall, I think this this is a very funny movie, especially for a kids movie. I was laughing throughout. I love the runner about like the unicorn toy wanting to send dad back, to, or for, I thought he said at first back to jail, which opens a lot <laughs> of questions. But I think it was just to jail. Um, I was like, oh, that's very funny, and then. There's the whole moment, as you kind of bring up, that they kind of almost make that happen. I was like, oh, we're going there. <laughs> like, uh, but for me, I just it wasn't as and this is not a knock against it because you can't really top it. But it just wasn't as emotional for me. Maybe maybe for parents it will be. I mean, kind of the the base of the story is like toys. The toys here are like the kids parents. Like someday they're not going to be needed. Like Woody is taking care of Bonnie and yeah, soon she's not going to need Woody anymore. And it's almost like, yeah, like the mom and dad soon, you're the kid's not going to need you anymore. They're going to move on past you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they had that whole thing. So I think for parents, it could be very emotional. 
Um, but yeah, just with that being said, the flashback in the beginning to Andy and that musical hit of You Got a Friend in Me, I started, I started, I'm like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> that, that music can do it to me, man. That, that scene, I'll always go back to it at Toy Story 3 when they're going in, you know, a spoiler, I guess, uh, into the incinerator. I was like, I was losing it. And I, I'm like, I remember I, I was, I went with uh, one of my good friends uh, from high school and I'm sitting there. I'm like, you cannot cry. If you cry, you will, you will, you will never live it down. You don't do it. Don't cry. And the movie ends and I look over to my friend and he's just bawling. <laughs> just like, <laughs> All right. Okay. I guess it's, it, I guess it's okay. I guess it's okay. But, but yeah. Oh man. Um, what would you say, John, would you recommend Toy Story 4? I think if you enjoyed the last three, um, you would be misplaced not to see this one just to just to not finish out the series so far. But it's always going to be a question if you don't see it. It's not it's not like it's one of those ones like if you didn't watch, you know, uh, uh, Indiana Jones four, you'd be fine. If you don't watch this one, eh, you'll 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 be missing something. I, I think it's at least worth seeing if you if you like the other three, especially in it, as we mentioned. You know, just seeing the animation probably on the big screen, it added so much to it. Even though I'll give more money to John, I'll, okay. I'll admit it. Go do it. Go See do it. it. Twice. It was worth it. Okay. Maybe yeah. once is enough. Wait <laughs> once, for the re-release. Wait for the, the re-release when they add a unfinished scene <laughs> in there. And, it, and it's literally just the animators with, like, puppets. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let's see here. We have one last thing to talk about. And it is reality television. So when we do that, we don't need Kyle, but we bring in Terry Hatcher. Because Terry Hatcher has to say... And by the way, they're real oh. and they're spectacular. Yeah. All right. Is it spectacular? <laughs> the premiere of Big Brother 21, the two-night premiere, just finished up about 50 minutes ago. 16 crazy idiots have nothing better to do this summer for 99 days, and they're back in the Big Brother house competing against each other for the half-million-dollar prize. And already, we are down to 15. Or are we? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Who knows yes. here? We will be spoiling the first two nights of Big Brother 21, so take that as you will. Yeah. Let's start off, Kyle. First off, any standout contestants for you here? Any any players that are standing out, good or bad, for you? Um, I think. I mean, it's so early to tell, but I think Tommy is going to be decent. Um, because because he's a super fan and it seems like he's kind of got a grip on things. He might be difficult in comps. Um. Uh, it's hard to tell one side has already created an alliance and they've kind of taken hold of the house. I think, um, Jackson, the, the, the blonde haired dude, right? That's his name. Mickey or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, they the call camp director here. Yeah. Camp yeah. director. I think he's playing way too. He's going to have to play that way the entire way. Now he can't, I guess no one really thought he would go under the radar, but like, He's going to have to play hard from here on out. Otherwise, he's it's just over. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's yeah. already got a huge target on his back. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some under-the-radar people. I don't know. Maybe the therapist, the Nick guy from New Jersey will be okay, kind of turn around. But uh, the women, I think they do have some better women this year, though. I think yeah. the women are going to be more competitive in this in yeah. this year, from what I've lot, seen in past years. A lot of smart and very athletic uh, women here in the house. I think yeah. they're they're actually going to because a lot of times in these shows, yeah. And you bring up this initial alliance. Yeah, they got a six person initial alliance. We'll see if that lasts beyond week two. Because yeah. to me, the the thing with Big Brother is you got to stay low those first few weeks. Yeah. I know you want to get in there and play and you know get into it. You want to stay low just because, as you mentioned, uh, Jack or Mickey, whatever you want to call him, he's already has a giant target on his back, and it's night two. Yeah. It's like, you know, the first time when he's eligible to be nominated, he's probably going up. Yeah. He's an athletic threat. He's a charmer. He's already gotten blood on his hands. It's 
But, you know, you have someone like Ovi. He's under yeah. the radar right now. And yeah. you have, you know, it's like his name's not going to come up. I mean, I say this now, knock on wood, who knows? But, like, it shouldn't come up for a few weeks. Just play under the radar. Don't make a target on yourself. Yeah. Uh, he, he's actually one of the players I got in my draft. For some reason, I uh, I got last play or last pick in this draft as well. It's just my luck this year. <laughs> And I got uh, this. Who the players I picked? Annalise, uh, Avi, and then I got a choice at the end between two, and I picked Catherine. So I, I I like my team. I got some strength. I got some under the radar. I got got a little bit of a little bit of everything. Which Catherine again? Catherine was was a blonde, not Chrissy, that ended up winning H O H. Oh, uh, another okay. blonde who oh all okay. about the Instagram and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. know. I figured she's a popular person. She'll probably be with the popular kids and there's majority okay. are popular. So maybe she'll make it, she'll make it through here. Yeah. But yeah. Man, most of the time in this, you get train wrecks too hard, too fast. And I feel like we got that a little bit here, uh, with was, I guess it is Jackson. Jackson is the camp director. Yeah. Because and Jack is Jack the Aquaman dude is Aquaman. Uh, was it, uh, Jason Mimosa as one of one of the yes. they called him <laughs> the other night. <laughs> Jeez, oh, man, take a shot for every time you heard an Aquaman joke and you would have been d- drunk no, in the first. Th- this is what I want to bring up. And this is like Big Brother always does this. And it's like if you're going to casting, just go in with some kind of stereotypical trope or some kind of thing and they will beat the hell out of it for the first however many weeks and then keep going with it it's just like never ending never ending yeah, do, you do you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah like tyler i'm a surfer ooh, ooh, you know yeah. like you have to be like that dumb idiot and then oh uh the one truck driver's like yeah oh, i got a message a breaker breaker for like everything yeah. has to be related to what their occupation i know is. cliff has to say some cowboy thing because he's a, wearing a cowboy hat so he just uh, has to there's so much more to their personality than the so, one little thing they have but it's so dumb yeah and uh the 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 um, truck driver dude made me laugh so hard about his joke about his tattoo on his arm that so that when he pull, pulls it up and people when they're driving by they get scared of him because he has his tattoo and they know he means business when he's driving truck. I don't remember this. <laughs> it was so sad and pathetic. It was ridiculous. But he sounds like Charlie Day once he gets up yeah. in the higher octaves. Yo, I was noticing that too. That voice could either be very fun this summer or very annoying very, very oh quick. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, but uh, Day man, master. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, now there's a couple of contestants here with possible connections and the show really mentioned only one and a half of them. I believe there's at least three pairs that the internet figures may know each other, which is very interesting because we've had stuff in the past with big brother where it's like the X's twist where they get there and they find out, Oh, there's my ex is here as well, which would be terrible for the yeah. entire summer. Uh, there was also project DNA when, they had uh, this like brother and sister that they never met, and then they met in the house, which was absolutely crazy. How did they know? Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, just because after a while you're telling every story about your life, and there's like, well, wait a minute, you were adopted in that town too. On that, we have the same birth. Wait, you know, it was like some we're like fraternal twin yeah. thing. But um, the connections we want to talk about. One that the show brought up is Tommy and Christy here. Now, Christy dated tommy's aunt for i think many years here the the internet found pictures of them before the season started tagged together what do you think about this connection kyle like the tommy it, christie it, it's weird it, right? it, yeah it's a strange one and i feel like it's something that the the i don't know if like both of them went into casting or both applied and then they were like wait we could have a connection here like I don't know what casting does. I don't know what research does in order to make these things happen. But it's such an odd connection that I don't think that they would go seeking it out. You yeah, know, it, it just it seems weird to me. It's just so weird of like six degrees of separation. I mean, at the time, what they do is they recruit people in New York and L.A. So, you know, you're bound to happen when 
all right, yeah, these two people are from Staten Island. Yeah. But still, like, the age difference, you would have thought that would have screwed things up. One that they don't really mention on the show, which isn't a, exactly a connection, but I, I think it's part. Ovi and Jackson did go to the same school. I think they're the same college, and sure, colleges are big. But I would think Jackson may at least know of Avi, at least a little bit. He was the class president at the time Jackson was there. So, again, I don't know There's, exactly. Dude, do you know who the class president was when we I, were at I school? I could take a guess. I'm not going to say specific names on the podcast, but <laughs> I, I know a couple people that stood okay, out. And I get the after. emails now. But I get emails I now from these no people. I just idea. think. idea. It could. I mean, I don't know what college these guys went to. They went to Tennessee. They went to. Oh, okay. Which right. is huge. Okay. Okay. I just think you know it was like the same time. We'll have to look at majors, but it's like, you know, who knows? I just think, think that's weird the again. Kid, the one what? kid went for like engineering, didn't he? Okay. Do you think Jackson went for engineering? I <laughs> How mean, dare I'm you? sorry. How I'm dare being stereotypical, you? but look at it. He's a server. He didn't Are you go he's to major? engineering. How huh? dare you? But also, I just don't understand casting doing this, though. I just don't understand this because also, I mean, maybe they have a friend of a friend. It's like very like, why are they doing like these half connections? Like, yeah, OK, I don't know. then pick somebody from the neighboring college. The, the that one that was four years difference. Like, don't pick someone that was in the exact same class. Yeah. As someone. Like, it's like, you know, it, it's like not like us necessarily, but they picked me and then somebody you know, in the health department school at Ithaca yeah. that also graduated in 2013 out of yeah. 16 people in the entire United States. Really? Well, that's I mean, what yeah, I'm saying. It is pretty crazy to me because I think three or four of the contestants are from New York city. Yeah. Aren't they? they are, Which yeah. is insane. Two are from Staten Island. One's from, no, actually two one's are from, from Staten Brooklyn. Island. Yeah. One's from Brooklyn. One's from Long Island. Two are from Staten Island, and she says she's from Staten Island, but then the lower third said somewhere in New Jersey. But it's like, uh, oh yeah, there oh, was a one guy from Jersey. So yeah, they they've like got said a lot. that. Yeah. yeah, they've got a lot in like one tiny pocket. I don't know. So, I don't know. I'm just it's saying. Just, can we like separate the six degrees of separation sure a little bit? I'm sure they will. They, yes, I'm sure they will talk at some point, and they'll probably know somebody. But I don't think. Class president and Jackson, Mickey or whatever the you. camp director were on the same path. I'm just saying. You're, you are so stereotypical. You got the euphoria well, of like the freaks and geeks brother thing going does. on. Yeah, that's what Big Brother does. Okay. All so right. I'm just okay. going right in along with them. I'm just saying. It's like what was it? Tyler and Angela last year were both from Hilton Head, South Carolina, and it's like yeah, again. You would think that I wouldn't even want that for like the the other contestants to be like, oh wait, you guys went to the same college at the same yeah. time, like, yeah, because other people in the house would be like, yeah, you guys are connected, you guys have yeah. a common bond already. But yeah, all right, let's talk about David here. He is the first one out of the Big Brother house. Jackson had to pick four people. They were banished, and then they had to win their way back into the. That was so stupid. They, I don't know why they had to say that they were out of the house and then they came back in and they had to fight their yeah. way back in. Whatever. David is out. But I knew about this over the weekend, not because of any kind of feed leaks or any kind of information like that. It was actually the photos that CBS released to the general public. Um, now, this is not the first time that they had poorly photoshopped uh, evicted house guests in here. Uh, two seasons ago, Cameron, uh, he was evicted night one, and then they put him in the corner there uh, just juggling some apples, and <laughs> everyone figured out, yeah, this doesn't look right. <laughs> but this time around, they did it with David, and there's two photos. There's one of him in the pool, which you can kind of see it. The one I really want to talk about is one where they're all wearing these white shirts, and they're all sitting around in some kind of like patio-type room. Uh -huh. He's sitting on a cooler off to the side, and it just looks like he's not even in this world to me. I mean, everyone is like like super smiley, super excited, and he's just there like, like a half smile kind of thing. And then there's the people around him that kind of really make it obvious here. Uh, one, he's sitting next to Annalise, 
Uh, by the way, if you're watching us on Twitch, you can probably see this uh, full screen or at least in the corner here on the podcast. You can check this photo out for yourself. Uh, Annalise has her arm out like kind of like this with her elbow out, which mm. would technically with how David is sitting would be jetting into his back. Like it would just be like sticking through it just the yeah. way she has her elbow. The one that's kind of really interesting is Tommy, who's standing right behind him. He doesn't have a leg. Uh, he's just missing his <laughs> leg. Uh, it's, nice. it's, it's erased for some reason. Perfect. It's like a back to the future, like he's disappearing. Yeah, awesome. I just, I just don't know why they do this. I don't, I can't wrap my head around this. Take the photos before the competition. Yeah. Take the photos <laughs> while they're on stage in the open. Yeah. Why no, wait until day two or three to take these group photos and then yeah. Photoshop the guy back in? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Because you know the internet is going to be finding this stuff out. They're finding out connections. Again, uh, it might not be a big connection, but they're finding out that this guy and this guy went to the same college at the same time. It's like they know all this information just by simple Google searches. Yeah. You can't, you can't figure this stuff out. And then, again, this is where the internet goes too far. Uh, they went to the photos that they were posted, and I guess there's like the digital info associated with the photos that you can look up. John, what's oh that term? God. EXIF. Yeah. And then they saw that the photos of David were taken about 90 minutes after the rest of the cast photos. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> so, That's insane. I also love how uh, John explained what it was, EXIF, and you just said, yeah. <laughs> like it was just like common knowledge that everyone uh, should know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> exchangeable EXIF, image file yeah. format. That dude, people are insane. Big Brother fans are crazy. Hey, watch it because they're gonna come after us, Kyle. I There's know. probably a couple listening right now. <laughs> I, know, I love probably. the Big Brother fans. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah. So we got a lot going on with this season here because David might not be out. Uh, they mentioned at the end that you're out for now, and then Julie mentions how. Uh, it might not be a battle back because it's something that's never happened before in the history of the show, and it might happen next week. So I don't know what that means. Back in, or he comes Either, back in as head of household. It, it's going <laughs> to be just something man. just <laughs> stupid, where it's like David comes back in and now he's tied to the hip with Paul, or you know, it's going to be just something yeah. like completely outrageous. Okay, he's going to come back with four weeks of safety and like a hidden immunity idol from Survivor. It's, yeah. it's going to make no <laughs> sense. <laughs> And that's one of the things I hate about this show. Like there's with Survivor, you get strategy here. Sometimes you get paint thrown in their faces. You get a squirrel just running. Like I texted Mike and I was like, why do I watch this show? We're spending 10 minutes on this squirrel costume guy. I know. Putting contestants in a (laughs) sack and taking them. What is happening? What am I doing with my life? (laughs) Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, we got we got that. We have some whacktivity competition, whatever that I is. Know. It's so <laughs> stupid. It sounds so dumb. And that, that my biggest problem with this is the producers. I mean, they just pull random s all the time to suit whatever the opinion is going. It's it's the worst. They're the worst. Yeah. I just don't like with the show. We've talked about it before how these pr- twists and random happenings just also happen to be around the same time as fan favorites are being on the block or like it's always yeah. like this weird like, oh, that's convenient. Oh, there's two vetoes this week. Oh, oh, this person can win three weeks of safety. Oh, like there's no rules to the show, at least with Survivor. Sure, they have season long twists or something. But for the most part, it's like. There's a format to the show. You can play the show. Yeah. But when the own players don't know what they're doing, it's just it's just chaos. Yeah. But that being said, I'm going to be still watching it. But <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, you going to stick with the season, you think? Uh, I don't know. So far, I like the contestants. Um, I think I like them more than some other seasons. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think they do have a decent group. So. All right. We'll see. All right, we'll see. Um, 
yeah, maybe we'll check in later on in the summer if something happens. Probably not too many frequent updates as, as years pass, but maybe we'll check in here and there on it. Uh, next week, you don't though, want to see more squirrel soon. No, no, <laughs> that that was nuts. I don't, eh, I don't need it. Oh boy, yeah, it's time to go. Yeah. Um, next week we may have a show called "The Loudest Voice" if Showtime cooperates and it allows those two to uh, get a copy of this because uh, <laughs> we'll have to see if we talk about it. If not, though, we will talk about this very strange, unique idea that I think is going to completely fail, but I'm going to be there watching it, and it's called What Just Happened with Fred Savage. That's all I'm going to say for now. You're going to have to tune in next week to figure <laughs> out what the hell is happening on this show because I'm, I'm still not sure if I understand what's happening. Uh, but to find those episodes, go to YouTube iTunes, Spotify, the blog, doerdunsey.com, and Twitch, twitch.tv slash doerdunsey. Uh, you can also get in touch with us on Facebook and on Twitter at doerdunsey. I want to thank both of you guys for, you know, switching up the time this week, going right on after Big Brother. Really appreciate it. No worries. Yeah, dude. Perfect. No on that note, I'm David Allen. Uh, I'm John Berwick. And I'm Cobbridger. And that's all we got for Doer Duncy. Goodbye, everybody.